Hi guys, so no true intro right now. Um, I just got up not too long ago. It is September 27, 11.44 a.m. And uh, I was just praying to God and just talking about what I've been through and what he set me free from. It's a huge testimony like this testimony is really big and I feel that in my heart I want to get through this chapter in my life and in order to get through it I need to share this with the world I need to share this with women who are going through things that are very similar who been through it and they're not doing good so I just want to share this part of my life, although it is very challenging, but you guys need to know. So, um, remember how like the first video I made was saying like, God is so good, life update. That video, right? So I didn't really tell you the full story of what I've been through and how God is really as good as I said he is. Because this testimony, let me, whew, let me tell you, I'm going to be very raw, I'm going to be very open and very honest. This is, let's just get into it. <clears throat> so, um, if you've seen my, the one testimony that's called the three day fasting and prayer testimony, um, it is very long to watch, but it connects to this one. So I mentioned a guy in that video. It was my ex that God has delivered me from. So um, last year, in like September of last year, um, my one of my roommates wasn't, well, it was just a situation with my roommates. They weren't paying the rent. So we were gonna get evicted within two weeks and I needed somewhere to go. I needed somewhere to live. I didn't know what to do. So then in that moment, I reached out to my ex, the one that God removed from my life. I reached out to him and I opened that door again. And when I reached out, I was like, hey, like this is happening. Like I don't have nowhere to go. He immediately offered hey, like, don't worry, um, I can get an apartment and we can live there. He was being so generous, so nice, and I didn't even go to God about it. I just trusted in man instead of God, right? That's first. So after that, <clears throat> we moved in together within those two weeks, and then things just started to change. Like, he went from lovey-dovey to have this wall this wall that was so cold like i'm not saying it was all the time but i just was so annoying to him he would like everything i did was like frustrating he wanted his own space he didn't want me to be on the couch with him sometimes so it just felt this wall and he also saw that video that i posted about him so i was living with someone who knew what i said i shared a testimony he also had his own type of feelings towards it so I was just like, oh my gosh, like, I was starting to think, like, what did I do? Like, was this the right decision? Things started to just get worse. So I found myself, like, I was being attacked by demonic thoughts. And the thoughts were, you should sleep with him or he's going to kick you out or he's going to sleep with someone else. So I would just always get these thoughts of, like, just sleep with them, just sleep with them. So we already started sleeping with each other before that, but I just felt because he was helping me and I was in his place, I had no choice but to sleep with him. So I felt like I was losing parts of myself because how can I preach the word of God while living in sin? So I was just like torn. I would sometimes um, wear a, a pad just to act like I had a yeast infection or sometimes I would act like my stomach hurt or 
I would just try not to have sex because I couldn't do it anymore. It felt like I didn't have a choice. And I told him no. <clears throat> I would tell him no sometimes. And that just didn't seem to like, he didn't understand what no meant. And I was just kind of like, oh my gosh, like do I have to? Like I felt like I had to, I didn't have a choice. Plus I also said no. So I was just going through this where I just felt the lowest in my life because I felt that my body was no longer my body. I felt that I sold my body to live here and that because he is helping me, I had to give him my body even when I didn't say, when I said no. And this outer layer of me, like no one really knew what I was going through because when you're in this situation, you kind of just feel like, well, why'd you open the door? You know, I just felt so much regret. I felt so angry with myself. I felt so like, well, God, like you should have linked on God. God would have provided. I was just so like, I was just more mad at myself than anyone else because I was just like, why did I do this to myself? So it was just like countless amount of times and come to find out, you know, he was sleeping with other people. And this whole time I just felt like, I felt like I had to, yet you were sleeping with other people. So then why include me if you're just trying to help me? So it was just like, it was so much. And honestly, through God's strength, that's the only reason why I was able to get through it. Because when I tell you guys, I was crying like no tomorrow. I was on my knees. I was fasting even with this situation because I did not want his spirit of lust to manifest in my body. And there was times when I was lazy where I saw the spirit of lust in my body. I felt it. I wanted to touch myself and I did. So because this man has a strong spirit of lust that he he's also not a Christian you know he doesn't seek deliverance so it's like because of all these things and certain objects that i had in that environment i was just constantly be constantly being attacked my spiritual self my spirit my physical just the whole thing where there was one instance where my body was taken out half away like let me tell i was sleeping one time and i saw my spiritual body come out and I looked and I see my physical body in, in the spirit realm. You don't really have to turn your head all the way because you can see behind you, you can see in front of you. So I see my spirit, my physical body dying. I see me in the spirit realm, I see my physical body choking on, and there's white foam coming out of my mouth. And I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And this is me in the spirit. I'm looking at myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Am I dying? Am I dying? And I can see that the guy is laying next to me. <clears throat> and I yell out to God, God, please help me. And I went back into my body as if God pushed me back in. And I was able to breathe again. I was attacked like no tomorrow one time i saw god show me in the spiritual realm i turned my body and i can see him in the spirit realm and it was a huge demon on top of this man like huge black demon on top of this man this is who i was sleeping with this is who i was laying next to he showed me this man had a spirit of lust in my dream God speaks to me in my dream. He showed me the spirit of love. He showed me this man naked with multiple women. Before I even knew and he told me that he was sleeping with people, God showed me before, months before. I saw multiple women, all colors, Asian, white, black, and he was naked in a bed. God showed me. He warned me. But what did I do? I didn't listen. All I could do in that moment because I didn't have a job I didn't have money like that so I didn't know what else to do so I just prayed I prayed I would literally get on my knees and pray because I didn't have no more strength in my body I, I couldn't like I wanted to die I didn't want to be there anymore so I literally got on my knees 
And sometimes before he would want to have sex, I would go in the bathroom, act like I had a yeast infection, put a pad in there, pray, Lord, please help me, please help me. I don't want to have sex anymore. I don't want to feel like I have to do this. I would pray, go back out there. He would try. I already had the pad. I already had the pill. So I literally would use those sometimes and act like I had a yeast infection. Yes. So that I didn't have to have sex. So I was just feeling like my body wasn't mine. And then all the guilt I carried because I'm like, why did I do this? Why did I open the door? And I'm just praying, God, please help me. Please help me. I dealt with this for almost a year until God helped me. Let me tell you how he did that. <laughs> So, the last straw, the last straw was last month, and we're in September, so let's say it was like August, like the last week of August, I couldn't take it no more. Like I already couldn't take it, but this is like, this is it. So we basically got, we basically got in an argument, and um, it was just taken the wrong way. <clears throat> And after that, like, I just felt like, you know, I can't do this anymore. So, I just started crying and praying. And then I asked, like, seven people, can you please pray for me? I needed, and usually I didn't tell people that. Like, I knew the power of prayer to the point where I asked seven Christians to pray for me. Because I knew that if all people were praying for me at the same time, Things will move. So I just was like, can you pray for me? Can you pray for me? Sent a huge text to people. Then I got on my knees. I was bawling. Like, God, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. And then I was like, if you take me out by next week, I will leave. I said, I'm even willing to move into an Airbnb. I can't do this, Lord. My best friend called me. And she was like, girl, I feel in my spirit that you should move here with me and my family. I was like, what? And I was like, it's crazy because usually like, I didn't even hesitate because I'm like, I was like, I kind of was like, are you sure? She was like, yeah, like, I feel like the Holy Spirit is putting it in my heart that you should come here. And I was like, okay, I mean, I was like, are you sure? Like, you have to ask your mom, like, and she was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, I want to ask you first. I'm going to ask my mom. <clears throat> she asked her mom. She's telling her the story. She didn't even get to finish. Her mom said yes. Tell her to come. She said tell her to come. Before she can finish telling her the story. And after that, she was like, hey, she said you can come. Tell me how God was preparing her before this happened. Because the morning of my friend, she prayed. And one of the, it was a verse about friends in Proverbs. Let me see if I can find it. Proverbs 3.28. So that morning of... She read this verse and she also prayed for me. The verse says, do not say to your neighbor, come back tomorrow and I'll give it to you when you already have it with you. So this just technically means that God was preparing this whole day. He was preparing me to come here. He was preparing to show her that, hey, like help your neighbor when they're in need, not tomorrow, but the day, the day of. So, um, as I was talking to her about this on the phone, she was like, she said she felt that verse come to her because she didn't know what to do. And God was like, basically telling her, like, remember what I told you, like, I told you to help your neighbor. So it was just so perfectly, like the way it worked out was so perfect. It was also a couple days. It was the day before the storm. New York had this huge storm. And they picked me up on a Wednesday. The storm was on a Thursday. If they did not pick me up, if they waited more days, um, I would have literally not been able to get home, to get here on time. 
So God's timing is perfect. He is in full control. He hears your prayers. He knows your struggles. He knows your situation and what you're going through. He knew that I was going to need his help. He knew I was going to feel like I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm just done. I'm done depending on this man. Done depending on my own self. Lord, I need you. I want to depend on you for help. And when God helps you, he comes all the way through. They gave me a room the sister was like oh um yeah if you ever need a room like i had a whole room i was just like wow i asked god can you take me out of here within a week i will leave he took me out it was exactly a week later seven days later <laughs> exactly he provided me a home, not only a home, a family, until whatever he wants me to go next. And while he has me here, what he has me doing, he is using me for this family. So I'm just like, when God says he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Sometimes you may have to endure the walk. It may not be an easy walk. I put myself in that situation, unfortunately, but God still helped me. Although I was sinning by having sex, God still helped me. God knew my desires. He knew where my heart was and why I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to live like that. He knew the attacks I was going through. He knew, but he still had his hand on me. So if you are going through something, know that God's hand is on you. And if you allow him, he will come through. Um, I don't live in regret. I forgive this guy like I needed help actually I had to pray like God help me forgive him because I didn't I'm gonna be honest I did not forgive him I had a hard time forgiving him I didn't want to forgive him but I know I had to because when you walk with God that's just a part of it so I prayed for him I forgive him I don't have any hate towards him I know that it's not a fight between flesh and blood but between the spirit um principalities you know it's not between the flesh it's between the spiritual realm so i was going through that fight and god has set me free i am not a slave to sin i am not a slave to sex my body is owned by christ i was going through this like people didn't they didn't think i was they did i just seemed so normal but inside your girl was crying out to God. I was weak. I was broken. And I was crying out to God. And God has completely put my heart back together. Every single piece of brokenness he has put back together. Every single piece of unforgiveness that I have for this man. He has put back together. Um, that door is now permanently closed. I will never open that door again. And this is a promise I made between me and the Lord. It's not going to be open. I have no desire to open it. Because whatever is on the other side is not for me. It's not for me. So if there, if God has closed a door in your life, keep it closed. Do not open it again. Because it's not supposed to be open. Especially if God already showed you what's on the other side. So my friend, she's actually texting me more of the verses that she saw that day. It said, um... It was Proverbs 27, 10. It says, do not forsake your friend or your or a friend of your family. And do not go to your relative's house when disaster strikes you. Better a neighbor nearby than a relative far away. That was God's way of telling her, help her. Do not forsake her. Help her. She, because of her obedience with the Lord, I was able to be set free from the situation look how amazing god is like the fact that he was preparing her before that moment happened and it's crazy because i at first i was regretting i was like oh my gosh was i supposed to get in an argument with him god lets things happen for a reason don't take the credit for it maybe i was supposed to say that i'm not even gonna say maybe i was supposed to get in an argument because that argument led to me getting out of there so moral of the story is god always comes through even if you are on a path that's not directed to where he has for you 
God knows you more than you know yourself because if he can count every single hair on your head, I'm telling you nobody knows how much hair they have on their heads, but God knows that. He knew that I was gonna need him more than ever. He knew that I was gonna get out of there. So even if you're praying for something and you're waiting for things to happen in your life and you feel like God isn't listening, I'm letting you know that he's listening, that he's present. If he's silent, he's working. If he's silent, he could be testing you. Who knows? Only God knows. It's not your job to worry about it. Just press and depend on him no matter what. And I'm so grateful. I'm so blessed and I'm so happy because he could have left me there. But that's not the God we know. He said, he literally said, I will never forsake you. He never forsake me in this moment. He literally helped me completely. And my trust has skyrocketed. Like sometimes your testimonies help you build a, a, a stronger relationship with God. Like allow that to happen because he showed me that he's in control. He showed me that he's a God that loves. <clears throat> that no matter where you put yourself, he's going to come through. Just get on your knees. I will pray. I would worship. When he left, I will worship. I will pray. Sometimes I will pray while he's there. Because I was just like, Lord, help me. And I was just waiting like till the day he took me out. I was like, Lord. And it's so crazy. I had a plan for myself. My plan was... Oh, I'm going to leave when, I was like, I'm going to leave when I get a job. No. <laughs> God took me out sooner. God took me out when he wanted to take me out. So just trust God and know that he is a God who answers prayers. So I'm very grateful. Um, my heart is healed. I have forgiveness for him but the door is just permanently closed and I am done with this chapter in my life and I hope that this can help people man and woman woman in the sense that this is your body if you do not want to do something with your body do not do it I had the thought of fear because I was living under someone else's roof but know that God can get you out of there. While I was living there, I came across a, a girl. Her video, um, it was on, I forgot. I'm going to put the thing up. But she basically was in a similar situation. And this seems common. She was in a situation where she was living with her boyfriend. And he, um, like she didn't have money, a job, and she was depending on him. And he would force himself, like, to have sex. She just didn't want to anymore. Like, she just really didn't want to sometimes. And he would force himself to have sex with her. And she couldn't take it anymore. So she became a stripper. You know? And I'm not judging her. I understand what she feels. I understand. I just have my trust in God. And if I didn't know God, who knows what I would have done. You know? When you're desperate... For help and when you're desperate to get out of a situation sometimes you do anything that you can do to get out of it but I'm so grateful that I know God I'm so grateful that I waited and I depended on him so I pray that each and every woman who's watching this who feels used and you feel stuck and you don't know what to do I'm telling you right now that God can help you God is your provider God is your protector God is your way maker God can do anything. There's nothing too big for him. So trust and start getting on your knees. Pray in your situation. Pray when you're out of your situation. Pray, pray, pray. I'm telling you right now, my prayers were answered. My prayers got me through this. That's why I'm out of this situation in a better environment that I've ever been in my entire life. For men out there, when a woman is telling you no, 
understand that she means no. Ask her, are you really saying no? Or you're just being like flirty. I don't know. Ask the girl. Stop forcing yourselves on woman. It is not your right. It is her body. And if she does not want to sleep with you, she does not have to. Understand yes and no. Pay attention to body language. Pay attention to what she's saying to you. Men, like... You, we're just, we're getting too old now. We're not children anymore. He's a grown man that I slept with. He's a grown man. Pay attention. Because she could really not want to. And she probably feels obligated to because of her situation. Pay attention. Open your eyes. And respect woman. And I'm not saying all men. I'm just saying the men, the men who is watching this, who feels that I'm attacking them or feels that I'm talking to them, you know who you are. Respect woman. And know that she's not obligated to sleep with you. Because if you are genuine and if you're a person who really truly wants to help someone, do that. Do your business outside. But stop using her. Stop making her feel like she has to because this is your way. This is her way of helping you. And let me tell you one more thing. While I was there, guys, <laughs> I did a lot. I did laundry for the both of us every week. I paid for that. I did, um, I cleaned every week. I bought the groceries. We split that sometimes, but I, I offered. When something was wrong with his car, I offered. He did not have to pay me back, but he decided to. I I just wanted to, I helped with the rent. And it wasn't a lot, but it was what I could offer. So in my case, it's not like I was just sitting around, not helping out, so I had to give him my body parts. No, I was doing a lot. So I just want to let you know, like, this is where I'm coming from. And I forgive him. It's fine. I just, putting that out there, I was helping, but that still wasn't enough clearly so i just want to encourage everyone i hope that this video can help you i hope that you can put your trust in our lord and savior because he can save you he can deliver you he can make a way for you he is a god who opens doors he is a god that closes doors he is a god that is always on time so i pray that you put your trust in him that you keep seeking him that you keep pressing because God is gonna come through. He did it for me. He'll definitely do it for you.